after witnessing four consecutive phases of what is being considered one of the harshest lockdowns amongst countries, India is slowly beginning to resume its economic activities. While the COVID-19 fear still looms large, many environmentalists see this window as an opportunity for the country to rejig its development model towards a low-carbon future. In India, buildings alone are set to contribute to 40% of energy-related carbon emissions. And considering the high density of population, the housing sector is in urgent need of an overhaul. Nilanjan Bhawal, an architect based in Delhi, has been working in the space of building sustainable, functional, eco-friendly homes for the last 30 odd years. A gold medalist in architecture from the Institute of Environmental Design in Gujarat and a postgraduate specialization in energy efficient architecture from Istanbul Technical University, Bhawal points out categorically that it is not about green building itself but about green living that drives the philosophy around sustainability. The biggest myth is that people believe that a green home is one that has a lot of green plants. You put in a lot of plants, you know, lawn and grass, it becomes green. Which is not so. Using natural uh, elements, lawn and grass, and those are used for insulation. Using plants is good because it uh, absorbs a lot of pollution, but this is just one little point in a green building. In a green building, it's actually green because it respects nature and it uh, kind of uses the replenishable sources, uh, resources and uh, reduces wastage, reduces consumption and we recycle a lot of materials and wherever possible we regenerate, you know, from the waste, from electricity, from the air, from the sun, we are regenerating. So that is the actual reality. Based on these very tenets, this roof, for instance, in the house that Bhawal lives in, in Delhi, is a green terrace in the making. Here too, he is using the same principles of insulation and rainwater harvesting that he had incorporated in one of his other homes in the city. This house was last renovated in 2000 and we have again insulated the roof. We have one foot of insulation and uh, on top of that, I used all the broken tiles that came out from the toilets. So all that were broken and used in the form of a pattern. And since a lot of them were light colored tiles, it reflects a lot of heat as well. And because of this raised insulation, we created in an innovative way a rear part of the terrace. Uh, that depression we used as a lawn. So when we use uh, at least one feet of earth, it allows the grass to grow very well and uh, it is also insulating. And all the rainwater that falls on the terrace, 100% of that rainwater is used in a channel and that is harvested into a tank and then recycled and used for watering all the plants in the terrace. And then uh, we used solar panels, of course, uh, almost 100% of the load is on the solar panels. We are generating about five uh, kilowatts of electricity that is uh, what has been installed here so, and apart from that the entire house has LED lighting minimal uh, air conditioning because we've used all insulating materials for the walls in the interiors. Not too far from here in the Chitranjan Park area in South Delhi is a residential building that has earned a name for itself. Green One as it is called happens to be India's first five-star rated green home certified by Terry the Energy and Resources Institute. Clearing rigorous checks and bars, this four-storied house, designed by Bhawal, qualified to be one of the most environmental-friendly individual homes in the country in 2013. One of its most striking features is the basement. So these are all double glazing. This is the basement and the stilt area and we've removed the slab so that uh, we get in a lot of light. As you can see, all the glazing is double glazed, uh, two layers of glass with a vacuum in between. So that insulates. It does not let in the heat, yet it lets in the light. As you can see in the basement right now, it's totally naturally lit. The building has the capacity to capture 478 litres of rainwater over a period of two days, which is more than 75% of its two-day water demand. 
it can also save up to 30 to 40 percent of power. Debjani Majumdar, who has been living here for the past three years, shares some of the benefits of living in a green home. The first thing about the greenhouse is, of course, uh, it's much cooler. Uh, and in, during the long summer months in India, this and in Delhi, when it gets so hot outside, at least it's seven, six to seven degrees uh, cooler inside the house. The other thing is about the light. Uh, there's a lot of natural uh, light inside the house. Project Green One was undertaken when public policy consultant and tech journalist Prashant Roy was looking to redevelop his ancestral property. Keen to explore green technology at a time when the concept was largely uncharted, Roy went on to collaborate with Terry to develop the Svagriha app, one that would help developers design green homes in an age when green building rating systems were available only for commercial properties. The biggest challenge was nobody had done it and uh, nobody had built a, a small home which was rated green. Uh, one reason was of course even the basic cost, even the basic registration cost of the process was 5 lakhs for the main RIA system as well as the lead system. So uh, it was that expensive to just register for the process. So it was, it was staggeringly, uh, you know, put you off if you actually thought of the costs of building a home. But, uh, as it turned out, it, it didn't get anywhere near that expensive, but I think that was one big worry at that point of time. It hadn't been done. So many of the systems that you needed for the green uh, stuff, you know, many of the control systems, the sewage uh, recycling plant, you know, maybe even the, the solar uh, uh, the panels, the photovoltaic panels, the automation systems, all these were actually designed for offices. There was nothing for homes as a result of which it could just be very expensive to install and maintain. And so in a sense, we were guinea pigs. And also remember this was early days where there were absolutely no incentives for green. So there wasn't really that benefit also that you would uh, do this and you would expect to start saving a lot of money at that point of time. According to a 2019 survey, about 4% of buildings in India are green. While the country has set itself an ambitious target of achieving 10 billion square feet of green building footprint by 2022, as of 2018, it had reached the halfway mark. According to Bhawal and Roy, the premium required for building a green home is often the biggest deterrent for people to make the shift. However, both point out that while a green home may cost 10 to 15% more than an ordinary one, depending on energy and water savings, it is possible to pay it off over a period of four to five years. They look expensive because the way they are detailed. We have uh, resorted to all LED lighting. Then uh, we have sensors which have come in. Even in an existing house, you can install small sensors where lights and uh, things can operate uh, depending on the movement of people. If a space is not occupied for a certain period of time, the light just switches off. Then uh, we can, of course, use solar geysers. They can be very easily installed on the terrace, retrofitted. We should use solar panels, they are very easy to use. We can uh, install uh, the, the garbage composting system. While the mushrooming of energy intensive high rise buildings over the last few decades have caused enough damage to an already fragile ecosystem, architects like Bhawal feel people are becoming more conscious of their choices, especially as they begin to prepare themselves for a post-COVID world.